Hey, what's up? This is episode one of a brand new venture, something I'm really pumped about. For the first time ever, I am delivering content in an audio format, which is so 2018, very new and cool and exciting, but also way harder than I thought it was going to be and a lot more work. If this is the first time you're hearing my voice, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Laura Kelly. I'm a wedding photographer, blogger, workshop teacher, and sometimes mentor living in Ottawa, Canada with my husband, Ryan, and two little kiddos, plus a miniature schnauzer who is constantly dreaming of running away and living with my dad who actually feeds him treats. There are probably a few reasons why you might be here. Maybe you're wondering what it is you might not like. That's, that makes a lot of sense. Maybe you're searching for something, a little bit of motivation during a difficult part of your life, or maybe you're living a fantastic life and you're slaying it day in, day out, pursuing your own happiness, and you're just sort of along the ride and looking for someone to hang out with in your headphones while you're on a run or a hike or commuting to work. Or maybe you know me in person and you're just sort of kindly checking out this very first episode of something that you might have heard me talking a lot about over the last six months. But whatever reason that brings you to episode one, I just want to say welcome and a sincere thank you for following along. It's so much work and I'm just so glad that you're here. Um, So this all started six months ago. I decided I would undertake a project and start my own podcast. And I knew very little about the podcasting world, um, specifically how to dive into that, how to physically create something in audio format. I knew nothing. I did what most people do when they decide that they're going to do something. And I sat on it for a really long time. I sort of started playing with the idea of this project in my mind and going back and forth about everything from what it would be about to a name to what kind of streaming service I would use or how that even worked. I started uh, making lists and using all these fancy headlines like development and content creation and And a lot of brainstorming, a lot of notes in my phone because that is like the notebook of the future. Um, And by the way, I had all those fancy names for those things, but what they were, were excuses. Excuses for not starting. I would be waiting on a perfect name to start something. I was waiting on a photographer to take professional photos of me because I had this perfect launch that I would have to do in my mind. It just had to be absolutely perfect before I could even take a first step. I poured time into a selection of a font choice and looked for something custom and had a logo designed and all of those things that you do when you're sitting on an idea. I even traveled and attended this conference called VoiceCon in New York City that I thought for sure would help me take the next step that I needed to actually get this podcast off the ground. And in a way, I'm lucky that my hesitance, which I now know to be fear and certainly the possibility of rejection, um, I'm lucky that mine only lasted six months. I would be willing to bet every dollar in my bank account that someone who can hear me right now has been toying with an idea, playing around with something big in their heads for over a year or maybe two or maybe five, maybe even longer. Now, the thing that's kind of cool about all of this is that if you're listening right now, it means I got out of the excuses train because something actually exists for you to listen to. But there's no real easy way to take something from an idea to existence. It's just the hard stuff that you already know you have to do, like a lot of hard work and perseverance and dedication and a lot of Googling. When you identify the strongest fears that exist within you, you take a bit of their power away from the get-go. You start to be able to craft tools and systems within that can counteract negative energy from every direction. My personal fear has always been, well, maybe not always, but at least in the last year or so, that I don't know enough about, frankly, anything to even dare dip my toe into a pool of sharing information and experience. 
like the voice inside me always said, who are you to try and do this? On a practical level, in my head, it sounded something like this. No one's going to listen to you. No one needs this in their life. By the way, just for fun, I like to give my inner voice like a scary ghost voice. So I would encourage you to do the same with yours if you also think that that's funny. So it was more like, no one will care about this and stuff like that. Okay, going back to what my insides were telling me, the thing is I knew that not to be true. I knew that so often people would tell me that on our heart-to-heart coffee dates, they left feeling so inspired and ready to go home and make huge things happen in their life. And I know that goodness and positive messaging and inspiration spreads quicker than wildfire. I know for a fact that if you help one person, you didn't help just one. Every time the scary voice would pop into my head, I tried my best to push it out before I even had time to start believing any of the things that were being said. Clearly, I knew that at least one person would listen. I mean, at the very least, my four closest girlfriends would give me a pity listen to any episode I would release until the end of time. We have a real supportive thing going on in our girl group, and I feel free to use them as my safety net. I know that even a dusting of inspiration for one person is not going to be a waste of time, right? That makes sense. It's very clear. How could this be a bad or a a useless pursuit of time? I can't say that I've been able to block out 100% of negativity or negative thoughts, but I have sort of shown that side of my brain who's boss lately. And I do believe that we are in control of our inner dialogue and I believe we can control how positivity and negativity flow through our lives. And when you connect that back to dreaming of something big, I think we can ultimately control how excuses become like speed bumps to our progress. What happens after the big dream is sort of up to you. For some people, and for a lot of people actually, that's where it ends. They close the scary tab on Google that They've typed in something daunting like um, how to write a book or how much uh, money would I need to start a bakery or learn calligraphy super fast and make money doing it. A lot of people close that tab before they even allow themselves to look much further. They let the negative self-talk know what they're thinking. And I am sure that it has some sort of radar because negativity always knows when you're up to something. It knows when you're dreaming about big stuff and it comes in and says, who am I to try and start something new when I already have a great job? Or maybe for you it says, you should be putting this energy towards something else in your life, like your current job or your family or your health. My personal favorite... (laughs) It's going to be so much work and it already sounds exhausting. Plus, everyone else already knows how to do this. You are super behind. And the funny thing is, the people who are successful in any given field, maybe not like neuroscience or whatever, those people still had the scary self-doubt. They felt lost and they quit multiple times, maybe for a real amount of time, like a month or a year, but maybe just for a half second every single day for the first six months that they were trying it out. I promise you that excuses found them though. There were definitely moments when they were thinking, I'm way too old for this, or I'm too poor to do this. I have no talent. I have no time. I should be spending time with my kids instead of pursuing this. The excuses were always there for sure. But for successful people, they don't let excuses act like speed bumps. They just cruise past them. They dive headfirst into them. They don't let themselves get carried away with the negativity and instead they usually find a way to switch it into extreme focus they say no to the voices who tell them they have no business being there and they just don't engage instead of hearing that you don't deserve this you start to fill your brain with things like everyone else started from the beginning and so will i i'll get better at this with every hour i put into it I know it's going to be a lot of work, but it's work that I'm excited to do, work that I can actually feel good about. When I originally wrote a script for our first episode, I was super excited about it. I recorded some, it was maybe half an hour. I played it for my husband and was so excited about it and thought that I had like hit the nail on the head. And he looked at me and kind of said like, 
okay, like I know you're trying to go for something that's not super fluffy, but it's like a little fluffy. It was a little like, rah, rah, you can do it. And it wasn't until he said that I was like, okay, I have to scrap everything. I have to start again. I have to really, if I'm going to say that I'm going to be real, I have to be super real. And I knew that this right here would be the perfect introduction to the podcast for a number of reasons. First, it felt very disingenuous if in any way I launched something like this, leading you to believe that it was super easy. That an idea just popped into my head one day and then two weeks later you heard my voice coming through your headphones. That would have felt like such a lie. And what's worse is that it could mislead someone who is maybe sitting on an idea of their own and they thought that it would be relatively easy. The start of something so does not get enough credit. It's often the hardest part of anything we do, but we tend to glaze over it. We make ourselves look super put together, look super fancy, and pretend that we have everything, all, all of our ducks in a row. We wouldn't want to let anyone in on our dirty little secret that we really have no idea what we're doing. But here's the best part. If you keep putting one foot in front of the other, you'll eventually get somewhere. I mean, that just makes sense. That's just common sense. I spent the day a little while ago at a Tony Robbins conference thing and heard from a number of speakers on seriously a wide range of topics, like from where to invest your money to like at some point we were singing some song in Italian and swaying back and forth from left to right. It was crazy. But one of Tony Robbins quotes hit me in the gut. It spoke directly to my number one excuse that I was using over and over and over again in every single thing that I do. He said, if you're not getting stuff done, there's a good chance you're making it too hard for yourself. It hit me like a brick. I was making things way more complicated than they needed to be. I was letting the illusion of perfect and fancy and put together dictate my actions. Specifically, I was holding off on the launch of this podcast because of a lengthy to-do list that I had totally made up in my head, by the way, thinking that if it wasn't going to be perfect, then I would wait until it was. But that goes against everything that we know about productivity. Doesn't that make sense? One step in front of the other. Progress, not perfection. We've heard all of these things. And any day that I let go by without moving forward on my goal was an opportunity for the door to close. Every day was an opportunity for the excuses to get the win. So I'm showing up today with this very unusual introduction to a podcast in hopes that it will show you what fear looks like in me and maybe you'll be able to identify it in yourself and start building those tools to replace it with the good stuff the stuff that tells you that you have to do this that you deserve to make this happen if there's a scary thing in your life and i guess my hope is that this would be a little spark and change the momentum to start moving in the other direction there's this quote that gets thrown around in the spin classes i've been taking this year And it's that only 10% of this class is what is given to you. And the other 90% is what you make of it. Now, obviously that has like, you know, a fitness implication that the choreo is, you know, 10% given to you, but really it's how hard you work and and how much you're going to dedicate yourself to the class. But it applies to a lot of things. And trust me, I'm not delusional to the point where I believe that a podcast can change a person's life. I know that I don't have any sort of magic dust to spread around and make a difference but sometimes all it takes is this little spark that 10 percent that's what I can promise you will be my ongoing goal as I continue to share stories and experiences and introduce you to some of the most inspiring people I've ever met later on in this podcast I want to share the story of my first real failure with you I want to share what it looked like and how it felt and how over time it changed into something that I now know was a closed door that made room for something even better. And it's something that you're hearing right this second. The podcast is called You Might Not Like It because the good stuff isn't always easy to hear. Everyone seems to be looking for secret ingredients or an easy way to do something It's also called You Might Not Like It because as I sat on an airplane on my way to that conference called VoiceCon, I scribbled down this note in my phone. It was a big list of all these things, a badass life, a purposeful life, life of purpose, motivation, inspiration, hustle, drive, make it happen, all those 
words that I knew my content was going to center around. I, I stared at the list and heard the little voice in my head. You don't know anything of value. You have nothing to give that doesn't already exist in the world. No one will listen to this and you're wasting your time. No one will like it. And underneath the long list of happy and empowering buzzwords, I wrote, they might not like it, but that's okay. I'm so glad you've joined me for this first episode. I really can't wait to see what's next. Live that spark, people. 10%. Find that extra 90 today and go make something happen for yourself. I'll see you on episode two.